Hello and welcome to JavaScript Testing Basics. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain why you might want to test, you should be able to install a test framework, and you should be able to write a test for a pure function. So to begin, uh, let's just talk about what testing is in general. Basically, it's you writing code that will test your other code. And the, at, a, at a very high level, what you want to do is figure out what the expected result should be of running your code. You should run your code, and then you should check the actual result against what you expected. And when they match, the tests pass, and it means that uh, you know a certain amount about the correctness of your code. So to demonstrate what this looks like, we're going to start by using the Mocha framework. So let's say you have a simple function that will just reverse a string. And you'd like to test that to make sure that the reversal is happening properly. Over at the command line, you can uh, npm install. And in this, for testing frameworks, you want to save to the development dependencies part of the package.json file, as opposed to the production uh, dependencies. So we say dash dash save dev instead of dash dash save. And here you install whatever testing frameworks you need to install. In this case, I'm going to be using Mocha and Chai. After that's there, you need to create a test. Uh, it's very common for tests to be in a directory called test. So we'll make that directory. And it's also very common for the names of the files to somehow represent the systems under test. In this case, since I'm just testing a function and the function is called reverse, I'm going to create a test called reverse. And let's see what that looks like. So over here, I have my lib directory with my reverse function, and I also have a separate file for testing it. To set up a test, you typically need to pull in a few things. The first thing you need to pull in is your own code. So here I'm going to require my reverse function. Uh, you also, depending on the test framework, will have to pull in uh, various or require various parts of the testing framework. So in this case, I want to use the expect syntax that Chai gives us. So I'm going to require Chai and I'm going to pull in the expect function. Now we can get down to writing our tests. Uh, so here I'm going to describe my reverse function and I'm going to say that it reverses the string given. And now I'm going to write my expectation. So I'm going to expect that when I call reverse on the string hello, that it should equal All right, so now I've written my test and I need to run it. Because I installed these packages locally, they'll exist in my node modules bin. And in this case, it's with Mocha. So I can run the test and I'll see that the test passes. So it's not super useful if the test passes the first time, and we'll get into that more in later videos. But right now, I just want to double check to make sure that um, you know, this test isn't passing for the wrong reason. So let's say I were to go in and instead of joining here in an empty space, I were to join on a dash. I were to rerun this test. I would see that I, it gives me a red, uh, a red message indicating that something didn't go well. And I also see a lot of helpful information about specifically what didn't go well. So here I get the name of the test that failed. I also see exactly why. So here I expected this string, which is my actual string, to equal this other string that I expected. So here immediately I know that my function is returning something uh, incorrectly, and I also see the line number, the exact line number in the test where that's failing. So I can go to my re reverse test on line 6, and now I know to expect that to fail. And when I go over and I make sure I have the correct code and I run my tests, I see that it's green. So 
most testing frameworks have three main parts. They have the assertions or the matchers. In this case, that's Chai. They have the test runner itself, which is Mocha. And they also typically have some set of utilities, either for handling asynchronous functions or network calls, such as Ajax or uh, file system database utilities. And together, these form the backbone of the way you're going to write tests. Test frameworks are uh, plentiful. There are so many of them. Mocha and Chai are very popular in both the Node and the browser testing communities. Another very popular framework is Jasmine, and a third is QUnit, and there are many, many more. It's important as you're learning to test that you don't get too caught up in or, or too dogmatic about a particular test framework. So just to sort of show how easy it is to switch between test frameworks, I'm going to set up a Jasmine test. So what you really want to make sure is, as we're going through this Jasmine example, uh, you're looking out for the same concepts, the same principles, and, and just know that it's OK to look up the syntax of a testing framework or a matching library at first, even on the job. Uh, testing frameworks are constantly evolving. They're constantly coming out. So let's see what it looks like in Jasmine. So to start out, instead of npm installing Mocha, we're going to npm install Jasmine. Jasmine has a nice utility to sort of set up the base directory structure that you want. And we can do that by calling node modules bin jasmine init. And when we come over to our Jasmine project here, we can see we have the same function that reverses a string. And here, instead of creating a test directory, it created a spec directory. So here I might say reverse spec.js. Very similar to what we did before, we have to include our code by requiring it correctly. And then we'll come up with our tests. Jasmine syntax and Mocha syntax are pretty similar. So they both start out with describe. And here I'll say we're describing reverse. And I'll say it reverses the string. And here we're going to expect that when we reverse the string, hello, instead of two dot equal, in Jasmine, it's a two equal all one word camel case. Running it is very similar. Instead of initting, we'll just run Jasmine. The output looks a little different here. We see one green dot to indicate that the uh, that test was passing. If we happen to have code that didn't pass the tests, we would see a very similar looking error message. Again, also in red, it also tells us what we got, what we wanted to get, and it gives us the exact file and line number. So the specific test framework that you're using doesn't really matter. The main concept is that you are writing code to test expected results against actual results. So you might be wondering why you would test. And in the beginning, as you are learning how to develop, testing is complicated. and it might actually take you longer. And so it, it feels like it's a total waste of time. But as your code gets more complex, as the, the methods and the, the functions that you're testing become more complex, testing is a huge time saver. If you have to switch applications into a browser every time and hit refresh, maybe fill out forms, click on buttons, sort of navigate through your site, these sorts of things end up taking a tremendous amount of time. Even if you just have to go into the node REPL at the command line and require your file over and over and over again. Um, these things can become really laborious. So uh, as you get more fluent in testing, it will take your overall development time down. One important part of testing is that it prevents regressions. So if you write some code and you test it, and then later someone else comes in and changes it, it's possible that they could break your code. If you have lots of tests, it'll tell them immediately whether it's broken. It can help you design better code. And you won't see this at first, but as you start testing first, that is testing before you even write the code, 
you'll notice that you, the code that you write will become a little bit more modular, or at least the, the, the ways that you're testing it will sort of give you hints as, as to how to make your code more module, modular. And finally, it serves as executable documentation. So everyone always talks about how you should document code, you should put comments in it, things like this. And comments can, over time, become disconnected with the actual code, because you might update the code and not update the comment. But in a test, the tests are actually running. So maybe the description of the test gets a little out of sync, but the test itself shows what really does happen with the code. And of course, these are all in addition to the very obvious part of testing, which is that it can help verify the correctness of your program. So there are some common things you'll find in any scenario where you're testing. And the main thing is you want to make testing as easy and as seamless as possible. So one of the first things is you want to make sure to set up NPM test. The second thing is, to the extent possible, you want tests to just constantly run in the background. And depending on your testing uh, setup, it might also be nice to have you know, big, beautiful, colored output in the browser. Uh, you might get you know, notifications when things are failing. So there are lots of, lots of ways we can make this better. But for right now, I'm going to just show you two very simple ways that you can make your tests a little bit easier to run. So we'll go back here to the Mocha, the Mocha test, and we can look in package.json. And you'll notice that when you do uh, an NPM init, it actually gives you a blank test uh, script to run. And here we can just fill this in with what we want. So here we want to go to node modules dot bin mocha. And now when I'm at the command line, I can run npm test. And it runs the mocha tests. Mocha also has a very convenient flag dash w, which stands for watch. And when you run watch, instead of exiting immediately, it keeps the process running. And whenever you make a change to your test, it automatically runs the test. So over here, let's say I made a change to the test and added some spaces. When I come back to my browser, I see immediately, without having to run it, that this has changed. When I change it again, I see that it comes back and it works, which means anytime I tab over to my terminal, I immediately see the most recent test run, and I don't have to worry about running them manually. And that's been a quick introduction to JavaScript testing basics.